There's a new frontrunner in the Republican race for president. The latest CBS News poll shows Herman Cain in a first place tie with Mitt Romney among GOP primary voters. And for Tea Party supporters, the former exec is now the clear favorite in the latest pollings. But who exactly is Herman Cain? We asked our Fast Draw team, Josh Landis and Mitch Butler, to paint a picture for us. Every four years, America competes to find out who will be America's next top Republican. Will it be Michelle Bachman, the Tea Partier, Ron Paul, the doctor, or Herman Cain, the CEO? Herman Cain made a name for himself as CEO of Godfather's Pizza. But his life has been his own original recipe, one he made from scratch. Cain was born in 1945 in Memphis. He and his brother Thurman grew up poor in segregated Atlanta. As a child, Cain had to drink from separate water fountains and ride in the back of the bus. His dream was to be the first in his family to earn a college degree. He got one, married his college sweetheart, and landed a civilian job as a mathematician in the Navy. He went back to school for a graduate degree and decided to move on to big business. He entered the corporate world and his resume reads like a menu. Kane started out at Coca-Cola. He became an executive at Pillsbury and saved a struggling division of Burger King restaurants. And then came an offer he couldn't refuse. CEO of Godfather's Pizza. The company was about to go under and Kane rescued it. After proving he could beat the heat in the kitchen, he left Godfather's for the greater good. The greater good of restaurants, that is. He became the head of the National Restaurant Association, lobbying in Washington. A big moment came in 1994. Kane squared off against President Clinton at a town hall meeting. Clinton was trying to build support for his health care proposal when Kane told the president his plan on how to pay for it all was wrong. Your calculation on what the impact would do, uh, quite honestly, is incorrect. Kane savored his moment in the spotlight. That showdown put him on the path to potentially become America's next top Republican. He ran for president in 2000 and the Senate in 2004 all the while building a talk radio following with The Herman Cain Show. But then Cain faced a personal crisis. He was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer with just a 12% long-term survival rate, but he pulled through. Like Lance Armstrong, Cain beat cancer and came out strong. Cain joined the race for the White House. Reporter Jim Galloway says the Tea Party has been central to his success. He really excites Republican crowds. Kane's secret recipe for America? He calls it the 999 plan. Drop the corporate tax to 9%, give everyone a flat income tax of 9%, and create a national sales tax of, yep, 9%. Kane's followers praise the simplicity, but a lot of economists say it's too simple. And unless it led to major economic growth, it would leave the government with a lot less money. Kane's accomplishments as a child of segregation have been impressive. But Galloway says, rather than protesting as a young man, Cain chose to battle inequality by working harder. His personal strategy has been, you don't dwell on it, you move past it. And Cain has moved a long way past his obstacles. He says he succeeded because of the strong work ethic he got from his parents. The dream of a college degree wasn't just his, it was their dream as well. But it's safe to say that none of them back then dreamed that Herman Cain would be this far along in his race to become America's next top Republican. We should mention that in the latest CBS News poll, undecided or don't know actually beat out both Romney and Cain by one point. So clearly the race is still uh, pretty much wide open. Very much wide open. <laughs>